So for our second day in Tennessee, we had located some gobblers the night before, and we watched them for a while that night. And we got a pretty good idea where they were going. We didn't actually watch them fly up, but the problem was gonna be the next morning, we had some, some really crappy weather blowing in. So we had about a half an hour gap there, right at daylight that we were gonna be able to get on them. So that next morning, we got in there tight. So that next morning we slid in there and we weren't exactly sure where they were at so we just stopped right about where we last saw them the night before and sure enough man they gobbled like 75 yards I mean they were right in there tight and there wasn't much we had for setup there's just a couple cedar trees and that was all we had so we had to throw down right there That's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five stick, you can get high with me. That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? I kind of expected them to pitch down. We got in here so late with the weather. We, I mean, we never really knew exactly where they were set up, but they were calling for rain all day, and we didn't really know if we were going to be able to go. So we got in here this morning, and we got right up to this top. These birds gobbled right here. So there's nothing else we could do. I mean, I just had to put that shredder decoy literally five feet from me. But they, they flew down. They come up this fence line. They come right in behind us. And it was just a goat rope in there for the longest time. And finally, all four of those longbirds come out and they got in front of me here. And it was just a, a miscommunication of shoot, not shoot, shoot, not to shoot. And it, it turned into something wild there, but we uh, we got it done. That freaking Jebs tore him up with that robe. But that was a pretty cool hunt. So it was great to get that turkey killed before the bad weather rolled in. And uh, after that, we just rolled into town. We got a quick bite to eat and regrouped while we were waiting for the weather to blow out. So after the rain stopped, we headed back out and we went to a spot where we knew there was a couple turkeys around. Sure enough, man, we pulled up there and there was two big longbeards out in the field. So we made a big loop around them, got set up and started calling. That was about as unbelievable as it gets right here. These are number two and three on the day. I killed that one right off the bat this morning and then the rain, rain kind of delayed us for a while. And uh, we'd been kind of on these turkeys all week. And uh, you know, we, we left them alone this morning. We came over here when the, when the rain quit. And we found them up here, maybe 200 yards in this field. So we made a big loop. We came around. This was pretty much our only setup option. They had like six hens with them, man. But we started calling to them and and they broke right away. They come right over the hill and they come right down by that rake. That was about as pretty as it could get. Dear old dad and Steven were able to dump them both. What a hunt. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. Right Good there. job getting them down there. So after the way the weather looked the night before, man, I was skeptical if we were even gonna get to hunt at all that next day. And you know, the way it turned out, killing three turkeys before lunchtime, it, uh, it surely surprised me. And it was great that my dad got to be there with us. And it was just a great hunt. It's one I surely won't soon forget.